Good morning. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Okay, it's another beautiful day. Let me just jump right into it. Today's video, I'm going to be telling you five things. Five things that will help you start running or will help you get back into running. So this video is going to be for new runners or people that used to run but are trying to get back into running. And that's what we're talking about today. Guys, my name is Matt. On this channel, we talk about all things running. If you like running, if you like anything about it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. And if you get any value from this video, please give it a thumbs up, hugely appreciated. You know what, usually I would do the intro, I would do a little running montage right now, but we're gonna jump right into it before I go for my run. You can see now, I'm wearing my pack. I'm, uh, I'm just finishing my coffee, I'm getting ready to get out the door, go for a run. But the first one, the first thing, the first thing you need to do if you are getting back into running or you're just starting running is commitment. That's right, commitment is the number one thing to start running. Without commitment, you're nothing. Without commitment, something else in your day will come up. I knew I was gonna be making this video today and commitment, commitment came right into my head when my alarm went off this morning. I was so fast asleep, I crashed into that alarm like it was it was it wasn't pretty it wasn't pretty for the first couple of minutes it took me it took me a couple of seconds to like gather myself because the alarm was horrible but i was committed i knew i was going to make this video i knew i was going for my run first thing and that is how i managed to push myself forward i knew what i had to do because i was committed that's what i need from you before we go any further i want you to tell me your commitment to running go ahead and write in the comments Commit to me right now that you are going to start running. Commit to me right now by telling me what you're going to be doing, what type of workout, how long you're going, how far you're going. Okay, I've talked enough. The next four will be coming right up after my run, but commitment. With commitment, you can do anything, right? If you're committed, just get out there, take care of business. Okay, I will see you after my run. I'm just finishing up my run. I'll tell you guys all about it in just a minute, but here's Harmony. Hey. hey. Did you have a good run? I did. What did you do? I did uh, three Peloton running workouts and a, a Peloton power walk. Hey, what workouts did you do? I did a hit run and an interval run and a fun run. The hit run was hit hard. Hit intervals. The and was easy really running. Hard. Wow. Yeah, but it's a nice morning, so I figured I might as well take advantage. It is a nice morning. It's beautiful. It is a lovely morning. It is 78 degrees or 26.56 Celsius. Still, still, I'm a bit wet. It is a soaker out there. I'm going to catch up with you in just a second on the bridge. I'm going to tell you about my run, and we're going to get into the the second step, the second step for beginner runners, or if you're getting back into running. Okay, before I tell you about my run today, I just wanted to say one more thing about commitment because there's a reason that commitment is the number one reason, the number one thing that will help beginner runners get started or if you're getting back into running. Or listen, if, even if you're a runner, I know we have a lot of very established, very fantastic runners that watch this channel and you will, you will agree with me. So this is some confirmation bias right here. Commitment is the number one thing thing because it gets you out there even when you don't feel like it. Listen, if you're committed, the reason we put commitment first is because if you're committed, then the rest doesn't matter. If you're committed to it, you're going to do it no matter what. You're going to do it if you don't feel good when you get up in the morning. You're going to do it if you're hungry. Like me, you're going to do it if it's 90 degrees and, you know, 90% humidity. You're going to do it even though it's uncomfortable. And it goes back to 
the whole motivation and discipline running thing. Uh, sorry, listen, my head's a little, I've just came back off an interval run and uh, my head's a little out of it right now. But this is kind of my whole thing about running is motivation and discipline. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not motivated to run. How do you get motivated to run? And if you remember my last video on the difference between motivation and discipline, I'll link that up here right now. It talks about how on Instagram, the hashtag running motivation has like millions of, of hits, but running discipline has very few. And that's a shame because the discipline is what's really important. Motivation, motivation can come and go, but discipline, discipline is gonna make sure you get out there even if the motivation isn't there at the time. And that's where commitment comes in. That was a very roundabout way of getting there. And thank you for still continuing to watch. All right, um, I gotta get a shower, but I am gonna tell you about my run right now. Okay, so this was a great run. It was actually cooler than normal. I know I already told you 78 degrees or 25.56 Celsius. You might think that's a little warm, but it's cooler than it has been. I think, I think the humidity is a little lower, which makes a big difference. But today's run was 14.1 miles or 22.7 kilometers, an average pace of 8.13 a mile or 5.06 a kilometer. Okay, so yeah, listen, the first half, first half of that 14 miles, very easy. And then I did some intervals, a couple of one minutes, a three minute, three, four minutes. Okay, let's jump right in while we're still here. Before I go inside and get carried away eating breakfast, I want to tell you about the second thing. The second thing that beginner runners really need to know. Consistency. Consistency. Okay, the first one is commitment. The second is consistency. And the reason, well, the reason kind of speaks for itself. And you know why consistency is important because you have to practice something if you want to get better at it. You can't just do something once and expect to be as good as you can be. You can't just do something once and expect to reach your potential. You know, the, the old 10,000 hour rule, right? You have to practice something for 10,000 hours before you become a master at it. Now, I don't think I will ever be a master at running, except for my age, I'm already a master's runner, but I will keep practicing in order to get better, in order to become more efficient, in order to make my breathing smoother, in order to make my stride more fluid, to make sure my arm swing isn't too bunched up. All those things are something that beginner runners really need to know about. In the beginning, it's gonna be tough and you may come back from your run and your shoulders ache because you're holding your shoulders up a little high. You might be out of breath. And let me tell you, there is nothing, there is nothing more uncomfortable than being out of breath and having your heart rate at the top of your zones, like zone four and zone five. And a lot of beginner runners and a lot of people coming back to running, they, they go out and they keep their heart rate too high because they think, well, I need to be running at a certain speed. No, take speed out of the equation. Consistency is what matters. So if you are a beginner runner, if you are getting back to running, I want you to show your commitment to your consistency by letting me know in the comments below how many times you are going to run a week. If you've already been running for a while and you don't have a problem with consistency, let me know how many times you run a week so perhaps some of the newer runners can see how many times you're running. Now, consistency doesn't mean every day. All right, don't get me wrong. Consistency doesn't mean every day. Recovery is so important. Recovery is where we prepare for our next run. So if you wanna run every other day, if you wanna take two days off after a workout, by all means do that, but be consistent. Just keep the same pattern going forward and you will be successful. All right, my friends, that is, uh, that's it on the bridge right now. I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna eat breakfast, get that recovery going, clean off because yeah, I'm soaked, stuff my shoes with newspaper, you know the drill, and I'll catch up with you in just a bit. I'm fresh now, fed and watered, and I'm feeling good. That run was pretty spectacular. I'm pretty happy with how that went today. But let's get this show on the road. Tip number three for beginner runners. Tip number three for runners coming back is to slow it down. That's right, you heard me, guys. I did mention it on the bridge about how uncomfortable it is to run with a high heart rate. If you're uncomfortable doing something, it's less likely that you're going to continue doing it. In the beginning, when you're just getting started, when you're going out there trying to establish a pattern, trying to build a habit, I want you to slow it down. For the majority of your training, I want you to build up your resiliency. I want you to build your strength. I want you to build your running form so running becomes easier. There's a lot of talk in training about the 80-20 approach 
to training. That is where 80% of your miles are very slow and 20% of your mileage is at a high intensity. That is a great way to look at your training, the 80% that really does have to be slow. That 80% is just churning over. You are building running efficiency doing those miles. I'm sure you've heard it from other YouTubers, from other coaches, but the best way to become a better runner is to run more. You can't run more if you're running too hard. Fourth tip for beginner runners, for just gonna put it out there for all runners, for all runners, is to set goals. I promise that you will be better at everything you do if you set a goal to achieve it. So we're talking about running, what type of goals should you set? Well, these goals have to be smart, they have to be specific. It means you have to say what it is you want to do. I want to be a faster runner at a 5K. We're gonna use that as our example going through. The next part of the goal is for it to be measurable. A 5K is already measurable because it's distance, but if we're setting a goal, we wanna set a time goal too. For this example, let's say 25 minutes. So, so far my goal is to run a 5K in 25 minutes. The next step of setting a goal is to make it achievable. Now, I think a 5K is achievable for anyone but let's say I had never run a step in my life well setting a goal to run a 5k in 25 minutes would not be achievable it's gonna be different for everyone the next step of setting goals is to make it realistic is it realistic for you to run a 5k in 25 minutes I'm gonna say yes and I'm here to encourage you but let's just say that your goal was to run 500 miles okay let's take the example to the extreme to show how ridiculous it is if it's not realistic. My goal was to run 500 miles and I had never run a 5K in 25 minutes. You know what, that might not be entirely realistic. It has to be something that you know you can achieve. Don't put that carrot too far away. And the final way to set a smart goal is to make it time-based. You have to give yourself a time limit. You have to put yourself on a clock. Let's say I wanna run a 5K in 25 minutes and I wanna do it in the next three months. That three months, that gives you a window. It puts that carrot just out of reach, but not too far away that you're gonna lose motivation as you train for it. The fifth tip for beginner runners, this is huge, this is a big one, and people coming back to running. The fifth tip is to increase gradually. Why do we wanna increase gradually? Because we don't wanna be injured. It has happened to me several times, I get carried away, I'm feeling good, so I up my mileage too much. And what happens? Well. Sometimes it's just a little feeling, a little twinge in my lower back. I have also pushed past that twinge and I have seriously injured myself. I, I hope I don't ever get another one because I am listening to my body more now than ever before. You've all heard the 10% rule, right? Don't increase your mileage more than 10% each week. I was gonna leave it at five tips for beginner runners. This one will keep your mind right. Please don't compare yourself to others. There are a lot of people on Strava and every day we see other people doing great things. We see people doing things that are a little faster than us, going a little further than us. Comparison is the thief of joy. You just focus on you. All right, my friends, thank you for staying all the way to the end of the video. I know this was a little longer than I usually put out, but I really appreciate your time checking in. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and write them in the comments below. I do wanna hear about your consistency, your commitment, and everything we've spoken about today. So tell me about that in the comments below too. If you did like this video, it would be hugely appreciated if you would give it a thumbs up. It kind of tells YouTube to push this video out to other people that may find it useful. If you're not already subscribed, I don't know why you're not, you've sat through this entire video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. As always, be kind, be happy, run well, and I'll see you next time.